It is that time, once again, coming from left field with all the news you don't want but need. Here's your favorite host, Jim the Tech Jericho. You're listening to 133.7 FM, The Rub. I'm your host, Jim the Tech Jericho. And oh my word, Lordy Lou, do I got some stories for you. Plundered from all the gray houses, territories, and beyond. I have here a stack of clippings, reports, and rumors from in front of me for no particular reason and or order. We're going to start with a little place over in Fed Sun territory. You may have heard of it. It's New Avalon. Now, says here, Curetan forces on New Avalon report spotting a golden mech playing harmonious music and its loudspeakers roaming in the area between Portland and Rainford. A team of scouts were sent to keep an eye on this mech, but was swiftly overwhelmed by what looked like militia forces bearing an iconography and upthrust sword with cross keys. Officials believe this to be the unsanctioned and illegal New Avalon Catholic Church and its warrior pope, Leo XXI. Further attempts to find and destroy this group have also been met with failure, with bodies of soldiers being found with signs around their necks reading Heretic and Deus Vote, giving pause to local officials in their attempt to root out this roaming band. In the nearing system of Botivia, elections were held where numerous parties vie for leadership and Botivia Parliament seats. During a heated debate in the parliament floor, a member of the Red Party assaulted a member of the Sons Party, which sparked a free-for-all in the chamber. Many persons were injured in the confrontation, and the act had led to the ejection and disqualification of many Red Party members, and suspension of those party Sons Party members that were involved in the brawl. Government officials clarify that the Red Party has had a long history of violence to their opposition, and this act was the last straw. As it stands, the Red Party is no longer being officially recognized as an official political party and is barred from participating in any future elections. New life could be reintroduced to the second world of the soul system, planet Venus, in a non-profit organization called Venus Renata has gained the backing of numerous local and wealthy individuals and big-name companies whom hope to restore the dead world to its former beauty. A Venus Renata spokesperson stated and, quote, The goal is to re-terraform the landscape of Venus back to its pre amerus disaster and make it a breadbasket and staging world capable of responding to major natural and man-made disasters on any world and in any system, end quote. This global humanitarian response concept is what's drawn many support to the nonprofit. And before they could do any of this, they must first get past the first hurdle, that is, approval from the Terran government. Financial analysts have speculated that to even begin such a bold project, the organization will need at least a high lord's ransom to have a hope of remaking a new sun's shade, and another after that for the rebalancing of the atmosphere. The CEO of Venus Renata stated that if support continues to grow as well as it has, then it's quite possible we could begin this project in, say, the next 20 years. That's quite bold, if you ask me. A weapons company in the world of Almac had recently had a showing of their latest prototype weapon system. In an open-air display, the company revealed an AC-30 built into the frame of a hunchback. With Federated Sun officials and military personnel on scene, the company attempted to give a display of just how capable they were in the field of weapons innovations. The first shot, being hilariously underpowered, flopped out and smashed the foot of the mech, requiring repairs and adjustments. After some adjustments had been made, the second shot obliterated its target, but knocked the mech down flat on its back in the process. Again, after the techs made 
final adjustments and the pilot being replaced with a remote control due to the pilot being knocked out in the fall exploded as capacitors overcharged and a brilliant display removed the entire upper half of the mech. When one of the techs was asked as to what the hell happened, a scruffy looking gentleman just shrugged and took a drag of his cigarette before walking off. <laughs> you know what? I can respect that. It's the whole, uh, you know what? Ain't my problem. <laughs> All right, carry on. This coming from the world of Bex. The Cumberland Nut Thumpers took a solid beating from the Gregerson Bottom Belchers in a blistering game of cricket during their championship match. The Nut Thumpers bowler, Jimmy Cobbleson, was injured when the batter let loose with a right good wallop which sent the ball careening directly into Cobbleson's left knee. Gobblesome is expected to make a full recovery, but with his injury, the Nut Thumpers would lose 8-2. to two. And with that, I think we gotta go to commercial. Hey there, folks. If you're looking for a good smoke that just won't quit too soon, then you need Canaries. Canaries is a slow, toasted tobacco that's the choice of miners in the deep periphery everywhere. And Canaries flavor is unmatched as it's filtered through a charcoal filter that makes for a smooth taste. So remember, before you go down in the deep yonder, Pick yourself up a pack of canaries. It's guaranteed to be a light that won't go out. Comstar Plus gets you access to millions of shows. Plus lets you choose between many thousands of dramas and documentaries. It also lets you cheer on your favorite Solaris team. Comstar Plus lets you pick from dozens of approved news sources anywhere, anytime. All for a very reasonable price. Sign up today to get Comstar Plus and use your promo code BLESSEDBLAKE15 to receive your one month free trial. Comstar Plus, the future of home entertainment. Welcome back. You're listening to 133.7 FM, The Rub. I'm your host, Jim the Technician Jericho, and this is the news. A mercenary quote-unquote training camp called Gozer Man's Yet is under investigation after a couple of their students perished due to extreme exhaustion. The students attending appear to be men who have zero military experience but are willing to pay out the nose to go through the experience of military basic training. The instructors of this camp all claim to be former Lyran military vets, but when pressed about their background, they refuse to answer any questions. The deceased families are suing this organization, which, after the investigation is concluded, will see all parties in the Loxley capital at South Fork. Miners on Co. have been on strike for nearly 30 days now with no signs of ending. The mining company, Husen's Excavations, have been embroiled on this strike when the union representative began demanding higher wages. The company stated that they are unable to increase wages without affecting other areas of the company, such as benefits, equipment, parts, and so forth and that they operate on a very strict budget. The company has also stated that this particular rep has been an absolute thorn in their side, and ever since this individual had been elevated to position of has been a detriment to the miners. Some of the veteran miners share this particular sentiment and are likely going to call for a vote to remove this problem representative. A death metal band called Isonet Punit had begun their Dead Man's Tour with their first stop being the famous mining system of Star's End. This did briefly spark off some protests from security firms and other personnel when it was announced that the location of the venue would be held in the same place as one of the first lords of the Star League had mysteriously died under mysterious circumstances. But their protests were quickly silenced when ticket sales were sold out shortly after box office had opened and an agreement being reached with the local pirate authorities in which they would receive free tickets to the show, provided they didn't do anything pirate-like to any persons visiting. 
famous Slayer 7 radio personality Duncan Fisher is said to have won the playwright Gilderoy's coveted Shakespeare Award after he successfully demonstrated his ability to act as every character in the play Macbeth. Despite mixed reviews from critics and audience members alike, with some demanding refunds within five minutes of the play's start, the Guild saw fit to award Mr. Fisher with the award for his uncanny ability of endurance and range. And as a side note, the award is literally a golden-plated spear made in the time period of the playwright. Protesters, Wales Matters Now holds up a maritime commercial traffic in the busiest harbors of the world of Clovis in Fed Sons territory. The group claims to fight for whales and their protections, but the world in question has had no history or recordings of any whale hunting, testing, or harvesting of any sort. Local authorities are baffled by this group's sudden appearance and are attempting to resolve this situation peacefully. Netflix announces its intentions to increase membership costs from 10 sea bills to 12 sea bills a month at the turn of the new fiscal quarter. This announcement sparked outrage from the consumer base as they accused the company of greed. As many point out, Netflix had already begun implementing other things such as commercials in the midst of and after the recording of many programs. Commonwealth League, Confederation, and Federation stock market show a dip in the Netflix stocks after this announcement had been posted. As a mass exodus of people began unsubscribing to the services, leaving negative comments in its wake. The 2180s are making a comeback in some built-er cities of the soul system. With flash neon lights and pastel pants, it would appear that the younger generations are embracing a time that's been long since looked at as something mystical. A time when business and pleasure commingled to make something God had not intended for man. Some believe that this retro style could make a more profound return galactic-wide, but some believe it to be nothing more than the flash in the pan like that of the reemergence and quick return to irrelevancy, that of bell-bottoms and neo-disco. This broadcast is brought to you by the Periphery Telecom Entertainment Group, floating somewhere nearby your neck of the woods. Aufmerksamkeit. Dein Data fordert dich auf, ihn am Drachen zu rächen. Deine Mutter ruft dich auf, sie vor Räubern zu schützen. Ihr Land braucht ihre Hilfe, um die Sicherheit der Menschen zu gewährleisten. Treten Sie den Streitkräften des Lyra Commonwealth bei und erhalten Sie einen Gehaltsbonus. You're listening to 133.7 FM, The Rub, your home for all your pirated news radio needs. Brought to you by the Periphery Telecom Entertainment Group floating somewhere in your neck of the woods. And Canaries, the best toasted tobacco and the choice of miners in the periphery everywhere. I'm your host, Jim the Technician Jericho, and this is 133.7 FM, The Rub. The company Quicksell, a well-known arms manufacturing company, famous for underbidding their competition and having their iconic unofficial quote of, you get what you paid for, is throwing their hat into the commercial sector after they've acquired the rights to some lost tech from Terra's 21st century aeronautical manufacturing company called Boeing. They've announced after months of reverse engineering, updating, and testing that they're ready to reveal their quick sale 757 XOMG. The XOMG, despite its retro appearance, is a suborbital vessel that's designed and designated to skip along the planet's atmosphere, allow for quick transportation of people and goods while reducing overhead costs. However, despite the numerous failed test flights and the alleged overlooking of safety protocols, as well as the sudden disappearance of many would-be whistleblowers, the company's CEO stated that he feels confident in their new product and what they have to offer the Intersphere market. From Solaris 7, 
a new champion has taken the title from the most unlikely of ways. David Borisknova from the unheard world of Van Zant, while equipped with his modified tornado power suit, managed to defeat numerous mech warriors by employing the tried and true tactic of sit and see. Armed with a large laser designed sniper rifle of unknown make, David waited until all the mechs were badly damaged before landing the finishing blows on those remaining. It was reported that after receiving his prize money, Mr. Borsknova suddenly just vanished without a trace. And in doing so, earned himself the nickname of the Solaris Ghost. A science vessel orbiting the star of Quell, Maine, in the old Rimworld Republic location, was discovered to be abandoned. A cargo vessel called the Esquire happened upon the station after receiving a general distress signal. After repeated failed attempts to contact the station, the Esquire boarded and found not a single soul on sight. The crew reports that it was an eerie silence with numerous empty bottles of seltzer water that have to be just strewn all over the place. And with the odd scribble on the bulkhead that read, in red crown, I might add, the clowns are here, God save us, please. Local officials are completely baffled as to who this station belonged to, where it came from, and who they are referring to. It just seems to be one of those mysteries of life, I suppose. Man, that appears to be the end of our time. I hope you've enjoyed this piloted segment of pirated news from all over the place, that being the inner sphere and beyond. And if you had, then please let the Periphery Telecom Entertainment Group know so we can make certain that this is a little bit more of a permanent basis in the future. With that, please take care of yourselves and be good to one another as the universe is a rather harsh and unhospitable place and we certainly don't need to add more to the misery. So, Godspeed, and hopefully we'll see each other again on the next transmission.